I don't think it's possible to feel more alive. That's like the only word that came to my mind so many times and you can do so many things in life that will give you a kick, but nothing like this. Do you need anything? You okay? I vowed I would never do Norseman. Too cold, too hot. The reputation of that race, I just thought is just gonna be really uncomfortable. Um, it's not something I wanna do. And I had a history of cold injuries before that as well. So I just thought I'm not gonna be able to ever do that race. And that all changed in 2019 when I raced my first X try in Canada and won. I was meant to race Norseman in 2020, uh, but like for many people, that got delayed until 2022. And that was the same with two other races that were on my race calendar, Keltman and the Himalaya X try. And so all three races ended up being in the diary for 2022. Mark and I went to Nepal in April for the trip of a lifetime and we were so excited about going there and doing this race. We got super fit. I think we were the fittest we've ever been in just before we went to Nepal. Good morning from the rooftop of the world. Oh my God. So we woke up at uh, 3000 meters this morning. Had a lovely overnight stay. Beautiful little place we stayed. We've got up this morning and come up. Already I think we're about 3-5. I'm trying to keep my effort level really conservative. But look at that. Absolutely staggering. Hey, get in there quick. Adios. Bye bye. <laughs> we made it. It's brutal, but what a view. Yeah. We've been blessed with this cloud break now, and we've got a cup of tea as well. It's staggering up here. It's just. It's hard to try and. Yeah. The magnitude of it. I mean, this last leg is to come from down there. It's taken us two hours. It's just, yeah. It's crazy. Definitely looking forward to a bit more oxygen. I'm feeling a bit, a bit spent by that, so. Well, we're four two now, yeah? Thereabouts. Um, just below four. Yeah. Round up four two, it's four two. <laughs> Unfortunately, not long after getting there, I got really sick. I ended up in hospital, having been evacuated by helicopter to Kathmandu. I 
I was diagnosed with ruptured stomach ulcers, which I didn't know I had. Um, and I had treatment in hospital for a few days and then dis I was discharged with medicines to take for two weeks. The experience of being in an police hospital was at first very scary because I was really sick and I didn't quite know how it was going to pan out but the doctors and nurses were absolutely brilliant. I was discharged after four or five days back to Pokhara, the race location and pretty soon Mark and I went off on an adventure into the mountains to recce the run route for the course. Thank you. Let's uh, find out how gnarly this extra is going to be. I don't know if you can see or tell, but you have these steps and they're so steep and they're tiny, as in the quads are just getting blown to bits. Ugh. I'm getting tired. See, still got our buddy with us. I wonder if he's going to make it all the way. Need the dog on me. <laughs> When I'm going up here, I'm trying to imagine how difficult this is going to be on race day. And I'm thinking about that last climb on the bike, let alone this. And we're not even nipped it yet. Not even a third of the way in. And I'm just thinking, this is probably, in fact, it will be the hardest thing, physically and mentally, I think that I've ever done. We punched out of the tree line and now, we get to see what it's all about. I'm struggling with, just trying to get to terms with what we're trying to do. It's actually even doable, I have to say. It's just immense. While the experience of being in the mountains and at altitude was incredible, I realised afterwards that my health wasn't good enough to take on the enormity of this race. Um, but also, Mark and I decided that we'd had too many near misses on the roads for us to be comfortable. Um, so sadly, we decided to return back to Spain uh, before, before the Him and Eric's try. We got back and very quickly got fully focused on Keltman <laughs> and we'd been looking forward to doing Keltman. It's another iconic x try in an area of Scotland that has a reputation for just being stunning and it gave me the perfect opportunity to prepare a lot of things for the Norseman. I think it's going to work. I am dubious. Mr. Lipsy's idea. Well, let's see. We'll see. I'll patent it once, uh, once it works, and then, and then I'll make millions. He's selling latex gloves tomorrow at the lock side, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, I'm getting out. Countman is another race that's freezing cold. The weather this year was atrocious. One of the worst years they've had. But racing in those conditions gave me a lot of confidence for Norseman. I learned a few really important things during the Cartman experience about kit and equipment, but also realized that my stomach hadn't fully recovered and that I was gonna to have to change my nutrition strategy for Norseman. But I also had, unfortunately, a flare up of a foot injury, an old foot injury, towards the very end of the Cartman race and that was something that was going to impact my training for Norseman. The Countman was a really positive experience for me. It was an amazing race. I was really chuffed to come second there. And it also proved to me that my preparation was pretty good and that I was ready to race in the cold for Norseman. I don't think there's any athlete that goes to Norseman without going through some sort of struggles in the training phase. And in fact, 
two weeks before Norseman, I'd convinced myself that that was it. I was out of the race. So Mark and I had a conversation where he basically said to me, we're not going out there for you to DNF. If you don't think you're gonna get through the run, then there's no point in going. And at this stage as well, we went to Tyree in the Scottish Hebrides for our summer holiday, which we do every year. And it's usually the time when Mark and I switch off, don't think about triathlon, do a little bit of exercise, but focus on spending time with family and uh, with Mark's daughter, Poppy. Just try and cover up the... I'm actually gonna put some Vaseline on top. Okay, do you want a top? In addition to the uncertainty around the injury, I was also on a tiny island in the Hebrides, nice. which could not be any more different from the terrain that I was going to face in Norway. It's flat, it's very bumpy roads which are not suitable for a time trial bike and there's only one hill on the island. Just before we went to Tyree, I found out that my pain that I was having running was an, a neural pain. And it was something that I was not gonna do any further damage to my body from running on. So that gave me confidence to run because I knew I wasn't gonna damage myself, but it didn't stop the pain. And the challenge I was then set was, can you get through this race with this pain? Find a hole and jump into it! One of the really special things about x is having a support crew with you. And Norseman is no exception. I had a team around me who I had essentially scraped together at the last minute, having not really known that I was going to go and race. And that's one of the things that runs through your mind when you have these doubts, is well, I can't let this team down. I'll do that all after. Oh, I've got another water bottle in there, that's good. Usually I like to plan our races so that we're there a week in advance and we've got plenty of time to recce and get settled before the race. But because of timings and being on holiday, we had to parachute in at the last minute. Before I knew it, I had time for a quick recce on the bike and the swim the day before. We got here late last night, what, midnight? After a long drive, it's about four and a half, five hours from Oslo. So it was 
it was pretty late getting here. The flight was a bit delayed, but I built the bike in Oslo just to make sure everything was working. In case there were any problems, we could get a fix there. It's pretty remote up here. Do a little practice swim and then go and go and register, um, get all the bits and bobs, and and then get everything sorted for tomorrow. It's going to fly by. It's never enough time. The start of Norseman is unique, it's like no other race. You get on a ferry and it's quite strange being surrounded by all those athletes in wetsuits sort of getting ready and that excitement and raw energy and emotion that you can feel, the air feels almost heavy. Personally, although I was really excited to be at Norseman, at that stage I felt really anxious. Uh, mainly because of my injury, not really knowing if I was going to be able to finish this race. I knew I could get to 20k and the pain would be manageable, but I just didn't know what was going to happen after that. It was a freezing cold morning, it was pouring rain, and all the athletes are hanging back because there's still 15 minutes to the race start, and once you jump off the ferry, you have to tread water until everyone else is off. So naturally, people don't want to jump off. But at the same time, the race organizers are literally trying to push people off the ferry. Come on, in the water! Find a hole and jump into it! As soon as I jumped in that water, all of the anxiety and stress that I'd been feeling on the ferry just disappeared. And I thought, I know how to do this. I knew I'd had a good swim when I got out um, and into T1 and saw that I was with Ailey, who ended up going on to win this race and who I'd also raced at Keltman. Lead lane is three minutes ahead, all right? That's okay. Just here to enjoy it. <laughs> Try to no, enjoy it. Right. I can see them horns coming out of your head already. <laughs> Just stay safe on that push iron, all right? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to As I came into T1, there was Britta, one of my support crew. It was just really nice to have her there. It was a slick transition, and despite the pouring rain, I was excited to get off and get on my bike. A couple of minutes now, 90 seconds, yeah? Stay safe. I had learned from Keltman actually that I just needed to put all the clothes on for the first section of the bike because when you're cold coming out of the swim and you've got bad weather, you can't afford for your cool temperature to drop anymore. Actually, one of the things I was worried about as well was my crew because the visibility was so low, the crew were having to wait outside the vehicle for 10, 15 minutes to make sure they saw me come through and, you know, could give me aid. What was it, Bea? Oh, found me, yeah. Uh, 30, minus 30. <laughs> it's a, what, one, two it's degrees? It's lovely, it's lovely. It's definitely a wind chill of a minus, definitely. Woo! We're going to get cold now on this descent. Yeah. Holy shit! Do you need anything? You okay? One thing I would say to people who want to go and do this race is always err on the side of caution. Put on too many clothes because 
If you get hot, you can unzip or take a layer off. But once your core temperature goes down, you really you can really struggle to get that back up in those conditions. And on that descent was where I succumbed to the cold. And towards the bottom of this descent, my hands were so numb that I couldn't eat or drink. I basically shouted to my crew um, that I couldn't feel my hands and I couldn't eat or drink. Hey. The next time I came to see them and they'd stopped, Britta had a hand warmer ready for me and that was a godsend. So I shoved that into my glove. Uh, and at this stage, actually, the bike route started to roll a bit and you could start pedaling again. And it wasn't long before I started to feel the blood come back into my hands and I could eat and drink again. One of the main advantages we had was that I had managed to get Elizabeth to come on our crew, who's a local, who's raced Norseman and supported before. So the last climb is the steepest, yes? Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. But it's not very long. All right. Before you leave, I'll probably just take a round bottle if you're going to leave me. My crew were brilliant and there was never a time where I didn't have what I needed. Superstar. The weather had started to improve on the second half of the bike. I started to warm up and we had an amazing tailwind for the last 30 or 40k. And I came into T2, there was Britta running to get my bike off me. Everything was laid out, ready to go. Um, and it was just such a relief to sort of get through transition really quickly and get out on the run and just find out where my legs were. So the first 20 kilometers or so of the Norseman marathon are pretty flat on the road. It was sunny, it's pretty calm, there's a bit of wind, but it lulls you into a full sense of security because this is a marathon with 1800 meters of ascent on it. One of the things I've been most worried about was the pain in my foot. And I was just over the moon because the first 25K, I had almost no pain and I was able to run really strong. However, towards the end of that 20, the first 20K, my stomach had really started to play up and I could feel my pace dropping a bit. And I also knew that as you turn at 25K to go up Zombie Hill, you've still got almost all of that 1800 meters of ascent to do in that last section of the run. Sophie jumped out. She was my support runner for the last section of the run and you're allowed to have somebody with you from the bottom of Zombie Hill. She had a puffer jacket on, and I just remember her saying that she was worried about getting cold, whereas I was just overheating by this stage. And that's one of the problems you get with, with races like this, where the weather conditions change so much, is you, you struggle to maintain a, a good core temperature. 
Zombie Hill is kind of legendary in extreme triathlon, but I'd never seen it. I had absolutely no idea what to expect. Well, I didn't realise it was longer. The tarmac section was as long as it is. Um, and actually the off-road bit is it's quite short, relatively speaking. And um, I've just come back down to meet Caroline now and she's just, she's just starting to show the first signs of suffering, really suffering. And I've seen a few of the other girls, third, fourth, they're starting to suffer as well. So there's still every much, everything to play for. Um, She's had a bit of coat now, so we'll see how she gets on. So you've got 12 kilometres, it's all on tarmac, and you're essentially running up an alpine pass. It's hairpin bends, it's steep, and for us, the sun was out, it was beating down, and I was in a world of pain. It was when I started up Zombie Hill and the angle of the road changed that my injury started to give me a lot of pain. As I got to the top of Zombie Hill and the gradient eased off a bit, I was able to start running again and I, I actually didn't feel too bad. I just ran down, I'm just about to turn right onto the mountain and I've just turned around now and looked. Caroline's running. Place ladies, maybe a minute. So she's made up some ground. I'm gonna tell her that message now, and hopefully she'll maybe steal a place. I think maybe there's gonna be another, another hour to go up the hill. So we'll see, but it's great to see her on it. Four, four girl, darling, you're catching her. She's about a minute. You caught her up. You caught her up. She's literally at the gate now, yeah? <laughs> Darling, you've got this, yeah? Do you want your red jacket? Do you want your red jacket? What jacket do you want? Well, I have to take a windproof down. I don't want to put it on. Okay. I just want to put it so in there. There's a I stopped and kind of spent quite a while, in retrospect, faffing about, changing my shoes, um, and you know, getting all my kit checked and everything. All right, come on, let's jacket, go. Jacket in that one, bag. I'm gonna catch this girl. So I need that bum bag. Yeah, don't worry about that. I'll get that. I'm gonna meet you in the top. Okay. Those trainers just need to go back in the car. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. No, no, I've got it, I've got it. Just go. Just go. At this stage in my head, I wasn't racing. I was just delighted to be fairly sure that I was actually going to finish this race. My support runner Sophie knows this area really well, she lives locally and she'd been up the mountain loads of times so she was just being brilliant, she was so supportive, she kept telling me what was coming um, and, I, and I was just doing everything I could to keep moving. One of the most amazing things that we had on race day was it was clear, you could see this incredible view laid out behind you. And that's something that's quite rare on this race. Often you'll be in the clag when you get near the top of the mountain. Um, I didn't really have the <laughs> presence of mind to enjoy it at that stage. But I got up onto this saddle and there was a there was a pretty fresh wind at this point, so I put on my jacket for the last section. And you could see the top and it felt like it was that you could touch it almost, it was so close. But then from that moment, it just didn't seem to get any closer. And I was stumbling up these rocks, just, just fighting. It felt like fighting every meter towards the finish line. Coming up those final steps and preparing for the finish line, 
I, f I just felt overwhelmed by the enormity of what me and the team had achieved that day. And it's been a while since I finished an event and been completely overcome on the finish line, but for Norseman, that's what happens. Oh my gosh. Oh, good job. Oh, good job. You did so good. Oh, so strong. Well done. Well done, Caroline. All right. Let's get a warm top on. Let's get out of the way. Get a warm top on, yeah? Oh, really? Hold on, babe. Hold on. It's gnarly up there, wasn't it? That last bit. Woo! Real gnarly. Literally, just after crossing the line and the initial elation and joy at finishing I was overcome by a kind of visceral reaction of just emotion that I couldn't breathe I burst into tears and I think it's just the enormity of a challenge like that and completing something that is so so tough just on that off-road bit at yeah, the end yeah. I heard you swearing yeah did you? That's fine. Uh. X try is so extreme that you can't do it on your own. And one of the incredible things about Norseman was the crew that supported me. Some of whom I hadn't met until that day of the race. And it's interesting because you you almost sign an unwritten contract with your crew for races like this. You don't want to let them down and they don't want to let you down. And they run around all day up a mountain looking after you and getting you to that finish line in the best possible shape. But at the same time, you're digging as deep as you possibly can just to finish strong and make them proud. And my crew for Norseman were exceptional and I can't thank them enough. <laughs> All right. It's not a sound we make, is it? It's a what? One, two it's degrees. Lovely. It's lovely. It's definitely a wind chill of a minus. Definitely. Woo! I have to go. I have to go. <laughs> <laughs>